Hello everyone and welcome to episode 18 of the PVM Hub. If you're unfamiliar with the series, these are a collection of beginner-friendly revolution guides geared towards teaching you the very basics of RuneScape 3 PVM. With that in mind, these guides will not be optimal, but simply a starting off point for those just starting in their PVM journey. Today we'll be taking a look at the first general of the Elder God Wars, the Bound Dragonkin, Karapak. Karapak is the first general released from the Elder God Wars and has a few unique mechanics that make this fight very fun and really rewarding. He has two modes, Normal and Hard Mode. This video will focus mainly on completing Normal Mode, but towards the end I'll touch briefly on the strategies you will use to beat Hard Mode as well. Karapak's biggest draws are the Scripture of Joss, a very strong pocket slot item, the Graded Concentrated Blast Codex, and Karapak's Hand Wraps. In hard mode, Karapak drops the pieces of the Staff Armadil, each valued currently at around 2 billion at the time of recording. Keep in mind that these prices are subject to change as the boss has only been out for a week now. On top of that, his normal drop table currently is very rewarding, offering an average of 800k per drop in solos. As in all of my videos, this guide will be broken up into a few different sections, those being the recommendations and requirements, setting up your revolution bar, the important facts and mechanics of the fight, and then a full fight breakdown. For requirements, Karapak actually has none. However, if you want to complete the questline up to his current point, you will be given the Shadow Pontifex Ring, which helps the fight by negating a few minor mechanics and offering slightly better drops. If you have the ability to get this ring, I would strongly recommend it, as having it will make mistakes much less punishing. As for my recommendations, I would suggest that you use range here. Mage will also be fine, and melee is by far the worst choice in my opinion, at least for learning. I suggest 90 range, 81 defense for barricade, and realistically you could do this boss with as little as 43 prayer for protection prayers, however getting up to 70 for rigor or 95 for turmoil will more than likely be your preferred option. You'll want 92 herb lore for overloads, and summoning really isn't required, however if you would like some extra supplies, you can bring a beast of burden like a spirit terror bird or a war tortoise. Once you get the hang of this boss, food won't really be an issue, so I'd recommend getting a DPS familiar like a Ripper Demon or a Steel Titan instead. For gear and supplies, I'll be bringing a Royal Crossbow with Royal Bolts. If you have the range level for Ruby but Criminal Bolts, I would strongly suggest those instead, as they will add a huge amount of DPS passively. For my kills, I'll be using Unaugmented Armadil, which is tier 70 ranged power armor, and if you have Invention unlocked, think about getting perks like Enhanced Devoted, Relentless, or Crackling. For my amulets, I'll be using an Amulet of Glory. I'm bringing an Illuminated God Book and an Ava's Cumulator. For my ring slot, I'm bringing the Asylum Surgeon's Ring. If you have the Shadow Pontifex Ring, you can choose to wear that instead, but I prefer to just keep it in my inventory as it works even when it's not equipped. In my inventory, I'm bringing a Shield, Stat Boosting Potions, a few Super Restores, a Power Burst of Vitality, and then a combination of Green Blubber Jellyfish and Beltfish. If you have the Enhanced Excalibur from completing the Seer's Village Hard Achievements, that will be a good item to have here as well, as it can passively restore HP to you when activated. Moving on from setups, let's take a look at what your Revolution Bar might want to look like. If you're unfamiliar with Revolution, it's a system in RuneScape that will automatically use your abilities for you from left to right. Here we'll be using a bar from the PVM Encyclopedia. This bar is considered optimal for no input revolution, but it does have a few expensive or difficult unlocks like Corruption Shot and Death Swiftness. While it's not required for Karapek, I'd really recommend having these abilities unlocked as they're extremely valuable and will make your ranged DPS much better as a whole. There are also a few defensive abilities you're going to need to know how to use and when. These abilities will have to be activated manually, but thankfully there are only 3-4 to four of them that are really required. These abilities are Devotion, Debilitate, Anticipate, Freedom, and if you feel comfortable with those you can add in abilities like Resonance and Reflect as well, for lower supply costs and easier kills. I suggest having these abilities on an easy to reach keybind so that you don't have to find and click them when the time comes. For me, I have Anticipate on A, Devotion on Control plus A, Freedom on S, Reflect on Control plus S, and Debilitate on Control plus D. You can set these up however you'd like, but that's just what works best for me. Now let's take a look at mechanics. Visually, there is a lot going on in this fight, and it can make it seem very intimidating. However, at its base, the fight is pretty simple, with a lot of room for creativity. There are four phases in normal mode Karapak, and four mechanics you will need to worry about. Karapak will always auto-attack with Mage, so Protect from Magic will be your go-to prayer. The first mechanic you will see is what we'll call a Rake. 
Arapak will shoot out a beam at the player, stunning them on hit. Shortly after, he will pull energy back towards him, dealing magic every tick to anyone caught inside. The beauty of this mechanic is that even if the stun hits you and you do nothing to break it, simply moving to the side can avoid all the damage from the second part of this mechanic. If you don't have the Shadow Pontifex Ring, this is the strat I would recommend. Simply let the stun hit you and then move out of the way to avoid the rest of the attack. Don't bother wasting any, or any of your defensives trying to get out of this, as you will want them next. If you do have the Shadow Pontifex Ring, feel free to avoid the stun completely by either using Anticipate or Freedom, and then moving to the side to unleash much better DPS. This is slightly more advanced, but it may help you phase the boss earlier. The next mechanic we will see is when Karapek jumps into the air and charges for a moment. Afterwards, he will come crashing down on the player at their current location, dealing melee damage. He will do this three times in total. If you don't have the Shadow Pontifex Ring, this attack will stun you and deal constant melee type damage until you move out from underneath him. If you do have the Pontifex Ring, it will not stun you but still do damage. This attack can be completely avoided by a well-timed Surge or Escape, and a successful avoidance will reset the cooldown on both of these abilities. The timing for this seems tight, but is surprisingly forgiving. What you want to look for is when Karapek's staff starts to move back towards the front of his body. As this happens, press your Surge key a single time, and you should avoid the damage completely. If you mess this up, your Surge will be on cooldown, and you'll need to change strategies for the next two dives. This is why we didn't use any defensives to break out of the stun earlier as now we can use Anticipate to block the second dive, and then Freedom to break out of the third. Make sure to have Protect from Melee up during this part, as the dive can hit upwards of 2-3000 to 3, damage, and once the third dive finishes, make sure to switch back to Protect from Mage. The last of Karapak's active mechanics is a Lightning Wall. Karapak will summon Walls of Lightning that slowly traverse the stage, and he will summon as many walls as the phase you're currently on. So in Phase 1, he will summon 1, Phase 2 will be 2, and Phase 3 will be 3. These walls do high typeless damage every tick you're touching them, and have deceptively large hitboxes for how big they look. Phase 1 is simple enough to surge through, however it gets more difficult when the walls don't line up very well. I would recommend using Debilitate, Reflect, or both when trying to get through the walls on either Phase 2 or 3. This will reduce any of the damage that the walls deal to you by either 50 or 75% respectively, and will really help you tank some hits if you surge incorrectly. I would also suggest bringing a power burst of vitality when dealing with these walls in phase 3. Each of these walls can deal around 1.6 to 2000 damage per wall per, per tick, so even at 75% reduced damage, they can still kill you surprisingly quickly. Do your best to find the safest place to surge, and if you're going to get hit, try and get hit by as few walls as possible. It's much better to walk through one wall than trying to run through all three. Every phase of Karapek will share these save mechanics, except for the final phase. The only difference is that each time you phase Karapek, he will summon a time-warped version of himself to do the mechanic at the same place he did previously. The time-warped version remembers where you were and where the attack happened the last time, and will aim for that same location. For example, if on phase 1 you dealt with a rake on the left-hand side of the arena, the time-warped clone will shoot out his rake towards the left side again, while the main Karapek will focus on you. While this sounds confusing, in all honesty, it doesn't affect the fight too much. There are clear visual indicators where the attacks will be coming from, and as long as you're paying a bit of attention, you'll have no problem avoiding them. It gets a bit trickier on Phase 3, when there are two of the Time Warped clones, but once again, it's fairly easy to deal with. If you want to be professional about it, you can intentionally position yourself at the start of the fight so that you know what to expect every time, but it is definitely not necessary. In Phase 4, Karapak will heal and get rid of all of his other abilities in exchange for an enraged auto attack. These attacks will deal high magic damage and progressively ignore more and more of your protection prayers while dealing more and more damage. Thankfully, Devotion still works to negate all of their damage to 1, and Debilitate and Reflect are great at knocking down the damage even further. If you want to choose to use Resonance, you can heal upwards of 4000 off of a single one of his auto attacks, and this section is just about DPSing the boss down before his damage output becomes too much to deal with. Once the boss reaches 0, you've done it, and you've completed your first KC at Karapak the Bound. Now, some of you may have noticed that I never talked about the extra action button you are given at the start of Phase 2. This button makes this fight extremely interesting, and allows for a ton of unique strategies which we will cover in a moment. Once you click the button, your position, HP, cooldowns, adrenaline, and prayer potions will be stored. After 10 seconds, you will be returned to that exact point in time. This allows you to essentially double cast abilities, or use an ultimate ability just to get that adrenaline refunded. The most crucial uses of this button is at the start of phase 4. 
If you click the extra action button and then immediately use Devotion, you will have a full 10 seconds of Devotion, and then once you rewind, Devotion will instantly be off of cooldown again for you to use once more, for a total of 20 seconds of magic damage immunity. This strat makes Phase 4 extremely easy and consistent, and makes sure that you can finish the kill every time. A few other popular uses of this is to activate just before putting down a Death Swiftness, so that when you rewind, you have a Death Swiftness and 100% Adrenaline to DPS with. Or, you can use it to negate the self-damage from abilities like Shadow Tendrils, or just to reset the ability cooldowns on Rapid Fire plus Snapshot. Keep in mind, however, that the rewind can also negatively affect your cooldowns. If you use Devotion before pressing the rewind button, it will rewind your cooldown back up to what it was 10 seconds ago. Or, if you rewind when you were low on health, it will return you back to the low health you were at when you pressed the button. This extra action button makes the fight extremely unique and a lot of fun, but be careful to use it wisely as it can make or break a fight. On your first couple attempts, I would suggest not going overboard with it, and focusing instead on using it just on phase 4 to get the double devotion, so that way you can build up an idea of how to handle the mechanics without the rewind first, and then you can experiment once you're more comfortable with it as a mechanic. Before we move on to a full kill of Karapak, I'm going to briefly touch on hard mode and the differences you can expect. Besides the obvious more damage and higher health, there are a few changes to his mechanics. For the rake mechanic, at the very end of the rake there will spawn an unstable rift that will deal damage to you until killed. You can stop this from being spawned at all by walking underneath Karapak as he tries to send it out. If you do this successfully for the whole kill, you will never have to deal with this mechanic at all. I'd suggest right clicking under Karapak's feet before he says his dialogue, and then walking under right after. For the dive mechanic, it remains the same, just with some added damage and extra clones if you're in a group. As for the lightning walls, they just deal roughly double damage. They're especially deadly here if you don't use defensives to negate them. Phase 4 is by far the biggest difference. This is where three time warp clones of both Karapak and yourself will spawn. You can warp into alternate timelines of yourself, immediately setting your health to whatever the clone's HP is. Each of your clones that dies gives Karapak 25 additional enrage, and every Karapak clone that you kill gives him 50 enrage. You have to kill all three Karapak clones to be able to damage Karapak, before finally finishing him off. Each of your clones can withstand 10 auto attacks before dying, so you're on a time limit here. A very small but helpful tip to buy yourself some more time is to jump into one of your clones right away, use a power burst of vitality, and then jump into a different one right after. This will lock your clone's HP at twice what it should be, allowing it to take 20 hits instead of 10. Abilities like Barricade, Immortality, and Devotion are very clutch here to negate all damage and save your clones to spare yourself some extra enrage. Finally, let's take a look at a full kill. Starting from War's Retreat, if you're watching this in July or August of 2021, Karapak will be the most recent boss portal, which means you can go through it for free. However, if this is not the case, your first KC, you'll need to head to the city of Seniston, north of the archaeology campus, and make your way to the chapel, and then head out the southern doors. Once here, start your Karapak instance and run to the west to get your fight started. Karapak will jump down on the west hand side, and you can start hitting him immediately. I choose to use Death Swiftness here, and then move off to the right hand side of it, so when he uses his rake ability it only covers the right side, and I can walk to the left and keep my Death Swiftness buff. You can see that exactly here, I'll walk over to the left, and then I start to use my thresholds like Rapid Fire and Snapshot to get the boosted damage out of my Death Swiftness. After a couple more auto attacks, he's going to go in his jump phase where he'll head up into the sky. We watch for his staff to come back down and press our surge a single time. If you do this correctly, it'll reset and you'll be able to dodge every single piece of damage from this mechanic. After that's completed, we move on to some more DPS before he starts calling in on a lightning wall. We move back towards the center of the arena so it doesn't spawn directly on us, and we get re ready to react to where it comes. We can see it comes from the northeastern side, so I have some time. I use Devotion here to block his auto attacks, and then I surge through the wall, avoiding all but one hit of it. I go back and focus myself on Karapak, and here's the same rinse and repeat for all of Phase 1, so I'm just going to speed it up.
After the second lightning wall here, we start phase two, and you can see we get our extra action button. I use it right away and drop a death swiftness, and then move off to the left hand side again. Now I'll get rewound back into the middle, and I have full adrenaline to use a rapid fire and a snapshot as I see fit. You can use whatever, whatever other thresholds you want here, just try and get as much damage down as you can. For the second phase dive, you can see that there is now an Echo clone of, of Karapak. We'll dive the same spots that he dove in phase 1. As long as we just continue to surge and avoid him at all costs, we should be totally fine. Again, you can see I took zero damage for that entire mechanic and was able to lay in some good damage into Karapak in the meantime. I switched my pair, prayer back to protect from Mage, and I hit the rewind button again while using Devotion so I get some free Devotion uptime. The second walls come in, and I surge through the first one. And then I'll use Debilitate on Care Pack and walk through the second one, as my surge is not off of cooldown yet. If you have Mobile Perk on your gear, you should be fine to surge through multiple times, or if you have Bladed Dive, you can use that here as well. Here's the rest of Phase 2 sped up. It's just going to be the exact same as it just was, it's just a rinse and repeat. Here, at the start of Phase 3, we'll do the exact same thing as we've done prior. Except for the fact that I make a little bit of a mistake, and I don't use my Death Swiftness right away. Instead, I choose to use Devotion to block the Rake entirely, so I don't take any damage from it. You can see that lets me just tank it right in the middle, and it hits me only once. This is an option if you'd like, however it's not really that good. It's just an option if you can't do anything else. The next dive, I choose to use Escape here instead of Surge, because a Surge would put me directly in the line of the previous Echo. This way I've desynced myself from it, and now I can attack Karapak and not worry about getting hit by any of the Echoes or him. I switch back to Protect from Mage, and then I continue on DPSing. I head back towards the middle of the arena so that I don't get hit by the walls. In this phase, Karapak will spawn three walls, so I choose to walk through the first one and save my Surge, and then ideally I would have surged through the next two, but I only surge through one, and then I have to tank my way through the second one as well. I use Reflect to negate the damage as my, debil as my Debilitate had run out. Here, we will speed it up one more time until we get to the start of phase four. Here at the start of phase 4, I move my bat self back towards the center, purely for my positioning purposes. There's no reason for this, I just liked it better. I take a rezo right at the start, you are welcome to do that if you want, and it gives me a free 2k HP. I use my time warp, and I use devotion to get myself a full 10 seconds of devotion uptime, then I use rapid fire and snapshot so that their cooldowns get reset when I revert. Once again, I revert, I use devotion, and then I rapid fire snapshot again to try and get the most damage out of it possible. After my Devotion runs out, I'm going to use Debilitate to reduce his damage by 50%, and then I'm going to continually eat here, as he's doing a lot of damage even through Prayer and Debilitate. A slight downside of using the Royal Crossbow is since it's a two-handed weapon, Reflect only works when I have a shield equipped, which means I can't use it very effectively. You can see I'm struggling a bit here to keep my health up, but Karapak's health is going down as well. I use another res there, and I continue on DPSing. Unfortunately here, Bowser walked on my keyboard, and I died. And if you're unfamiliar with Bowser, that is my cat. But thankfully, on a second attempt, I managed to get the kill just fine, and we got a 1 mil drop, easily paying for my death cost of around 200. But with that, you have now gotten your first kill at the first general of the Elder God Wars dungeon. Karapak is a really fun boss, so make sure you start to experiment with the time warp whenever you start to feel more comfortable with the fight. If you have any more questions that weren't answered in this video, feel free to check out my Discord, which will be linked in the comments, or leave a comment on this video. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like, and if you like more than one of my videos, please consider subscribing.
Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Singing out.